Hello there, Ian. Ian Andrews. Hiya. We're at Birmingham Library. Tell me a little bit about uh, what we're doing here in the gallery. You're looking at Collision Event, the Sketchbook and the Collider Collision Event, um, which is the latest manifestation of a collaboration that I've been doing with um, Professor Costas Nikolopoulos from the Particle Physics Group in the, from the University of Birmingham. So what does this whole project entail then? So? Uh, it involves me officially before as artist in residence last year and now I suppose unofficially working with him and trying to respond to I would say current research but to be honest because I'm, I'm a complete novice at science I've had to catch up and learn about particle physics so it's really him telling me the history of particle physics and where they are at the moment rather than cutting edge contemporary research into dark matter and things like this. So I'm hoping to move on to dark matter but at the moment I'm still looking at the particles that so what they know about. So what's your background? You're an artist? Yes, yeah, I have been for Christ knows how many years. So you've collaborated with a scientist, a professor? Uh... Yes, he's, he's a professor in particle physics. And so in terms of the project itself, uh, what, how, what are you looking to do in terms of uh, being a curator and putting this on together it, it, from an artistic point of view or is it, it very factual? Curatorially, it's, it's curated by Dave Miller. I don't curate myself. Okay. Um, I've been on a journey of, of, of change from a very cluttered, um, um, massive, sprawling assemblage-based work down to very pared, um, pared down, edited, drawing-based approaches, which is in a direct response, really, to my work with Professor Nikolopoulos, who's, because he's looking at the elemental building blocks of you, me, life, the universe and everything, um, I've, I kind of felt that my practice... To respond to him and his research with the practice that I had was, wasn't possible. So I kind of pared down my own approach to visual language, drawing, point, line and plane. That's why I was looking at, uh, at uh, Paul Clay when you came in, the, the thinking eye from the Bauhaus lecture notes. Um, because I've used Kandinsky and Clay as kind of inspirational artistic um, sounding boards, if you like, for this stripping back of your visual language down to point, line and plane. So in layman's terms, what does that mean? It means I've edited my language right back down to the bare basics, so it kind of ba it balances with Costas looking at his at the bare basics of reality. So we've got some kind of intimate connection between my drawing language and the particles that he's discovering that are the elemental ones that make up everything around us. So for you, has that been quite a challenge? Because like from a creative perspective, there's that thing, do you kind of go in, well, there's no barriers here, or do you kind it, of just... It was challenging because you can't see any of these things. They are so tiny, no amount of magnification, no amount of photographic um, high-tech wizardry can find them. Uh, they're only visible, you can only see the footprints they leave in a detector in the enabling medium that's in that detector. So um, we kind of bonded, my physicist and I, over the fact that uh, artists are constantly having to try and make visible something that's completely invisible, whether it's an emotional, psychological or ideas-based thing. And of course, the particle physicists are doing exactly the same. Um, they can't see any of these things, so they're constantly searching for signs that they existed um, so that's where we bonded originally. And it's called the Sketchbook and the Collider overall, the collaboration, because bizarrely, although a collider is a 27 kilometre um, giant billion dollar um, detector underneath uh, the, the Alps in Geneva, and, and my sketchbook is um, <laughs> a few pages held together with, uh, or not held together with, um, with a bit of binding. We felt that what he was doing in the Collider was exactly what I was doing in the sketchbook. We were throwing ideas together um, to see if something happens, and in the Collider they crush particles together um, to see if they can create the ever smaller particles to understand how the world is, is made and, and, and how things interact. So, do you now understand how the world is made? No. <laughs> because what they've discovered is only 5% of the world. The other 95% is still to be... To, Still to, still to be discovered, and it's it's primarily dark matter and dark energy, and that's what they're going for next. So um, I, I haven't felt able to take that on yet. I, I mean, Christ knows the, the physicists don't understand it yet, but um, I've been sort of playing catch up really with the uh, with some basic science with him really. What what was your particular? Did you have a remit as such, whereby is it is it something that you you needed to show or? Or, or it was to start with it was just pure interest i've always been interested in how subject areas should not be separated and divided 
Um, and uh, my background in education has always been encouraging people to move across boundaries. Um, you know, in primary school, I don't believe that they should be taught separately maths, separately art, separately geography. It should be a creative curiosity that they're encouraged to develop. Um, so my interest in literally stomping all over boundaries between things, I suppose, was the initial um, catalyst for me. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that started it off unofficially. I started to talk to Costas before we were ever funded or had any, uh, had any um, um, funding to do these things. Um, but then, of course, when I was artist in residence at the uni, it was, it, was, it was kind of my job to make some kind of art based on what he was telling me. Um, and then it kind of got very real and very serious. And it, it is, because it's impossible to see anything of the, of the particles that he's talking about, it, as I say, it gelled with us, with me as artist, as, a, as an artist. And uh, so I tried to find an equivalent parallel but that, that would have an intimate connection with what he was doing. So there's a code to the drawings, different marks, different shapes, different ways of drawing, different rhythms of drawing kind of relate to some of the particle characteristics that he's talking about. So what was your starting point? Was it literally like lo looking at a particle, looking at an atom or well, no, that, that kind of... Well, you can't see them, that's the oh, you Right, can, okay. I mean, you could just about photograph an atom, but it comes out as a tiny little blur. I'm I think I'm going back to my uh, school days where I was just... Uh, this is an oh, atom. Oh, you'll see a diagram. Oh, and the, the, in the middle of it is a nucleus or yeah, a proton. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that I still remember that and there was an <laughs> electron that circulated it. But you're going to tell me otherwise. Well, no, no, all of that is true up to a point, it's just that you can't see it and the diagram is a, is a kind of way of visualising it that's, that's sort of misleading um, and, they, and they have new ways of visualising it that, that um, are perhaps more, the electron for example is, is more like a blurred cloud rather than a little, a little marble um, because we don't quite know where these things are um, and particles that can be in a wave formation or, or, or located in a particular place so they, they seem to oscillate between these, these two. Um, so there's all sorts of strange things going on and we have to talk about them using conventions and the convention that Costas would love to, for me to know is maths but I, I, my maths is beyond GCSE level, I mean lower than GCSE level. Um, so we have to converse and, and I try and make some kind of art that he feels is not misleading. He's very, he, my, my, my physicist is an outreach phenomenon, he works with dancers, live coders, uh, visual arts with me. Um, and he's very keen to get the message about particle physics out there, but not to mislead. So I give him ultimate editorial control. If he okay. feels that some, a piece of work doesn't do what I say I was responding to, and it's misleading, which is scientific terms for, oh my God, don't do it, then it doesn't go in the exhibition. So your work, it is very representative then, in that sense, without... It should... If I tell you something about it that you should get from it, if you, if you want to know about the physics behind it, then it shouldn't be misleading, yes. Yeah, yeah. So is it still open to interpretation? But it's a parallel, yeah. I mean, you yeah. have to say that I'm trying not to just make art that is inspired by. Um, I'm trying to, to form an interconnection, uh, an intimate connection between the language I'm using and the, whether it's a film, whether it's a, a drawing, the, the language I'm using and what I'm trying to suggest in terms of the particles, their characteristics, mass, spin and charge and the way they interact with the various forces. Um, so I'm trying not to do the vague kind of RT, this is I'm inspired by a thing. On the other hand, although I'm trying to create this intimate connection, nevertheless it is a parallel a parallel uh, universe, if you like, art and physics, and, and we're not fully um, able to bring them together. It is running alongside at the moment. I mean, I have hopes of creating some kind of space where we can perhaps intermerge a little bit more, but that's a, an aspiration rather than something that's uh, in evidence yet. What's the response of scientists been like? Um, suspicious to start with, right. but then they realised that, particularly when they find out my background and what my practice used to look like, um, and then they realise that I completely changed my way of operating for this particular, um, I, I call it a project, that makes it sound like I'm just going to do it like this for a while and then go off and do something completely different, which might not be the case. But they kind of see the change that I've gone through in my work, and they sort of respect that, and therefore they take me more seriously than if I was... As Costa said when I first met him, I didn't. I, I agreed to work with you without any funding at all because you didn't. You wanted to know rather than just grab a few headline particle physics phrases and tag them onto an exhibition. So I've tried to understand. I've done a lot of background research, a lot of reading. Um, I've listened to him lecture. I've, I've, we've delivered workshops together. I've picked up 
and try to you know, immerse myself in the subject and then make artwork about it rather than, as, as he said, tag a few headline phrases onto um, something that it doesn't really... He hates the word quantum, for example. Um, he freaks out uh, about that because he says it's been devalued beyond belief and it's, it's, very, dis it's very misleading. Um, I suppose the ultimate would be the Bond film that was Quantum of Solace <laughs> a, a while back. Um, you know, the term quantum, is uh, quantum mechanics, the, the, the term quantum is just devalued beyond belief. Um, so do, do, have the scientists taken anything from you in terms of where they've gone, well, that's, I, I, I never thought, you, you've discovered something that we never <laughs> even thought about. That would be the ultimate, wouldn't it? But not yet. I mean, at the moment, I get a lot from them and they get a, a window and an opportunity to outreach to a different audience, I suppose, is the best way of putting it. Are you um, making it sexy, if that makes sense? I don't know if I'm making it sexy, but I'm making it well, more, sexier. Easy, <laughs> more easy to get into it because people can come in, see a film, see a drawing, there's something tangible in front of them, and then they can be told some of the theories behind it, and then they can be led to historic artefacts and learn about the particle collider that was at the uni and all the other things and so on. Um, rather than just a PowerPoint saying, well, this is a quark, and quarks never appear singly, and, and they sort of, you know, they're, they're, they're held together by gluons, you can tell them that. But if you show them a film that's trying to visualise it, then it gives them a way in. What, what are your... Uh, I'm their way in. <laughs> you're, you're the way in. What, what kind of things would you say, uh, uh, well, what things are here in, in, in the exhibition itself that uh, people should come and see? So... Uh, well, are there specific? I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's, is there a wave machine or yes, things I mean, like? We've got well, thanks to research and cultural collections, Claire Mullet and her team at the uni, um, who are responsible for the cultural holdings across the university. We've got some items from an historic physics collection, so we've got Wheatstone's waves machine and um, Hibbard's disc. Um, Wheatstone's waves is an 18, uh, 1800s um, philosophical toy, I suppose, where when you move the the rods at either end, the, 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 um, the, the rods and uh, beads go up in different formations showing you visualising wave, waves in a wave formation. And Hibbard's disc is, a, is a, one of the few remaining components of the original um, collider that was at the, or the particle accelerator that was at the university and operating in the 50s. They still have one operating, but it doesn't get up to the energies needed for any true discoveries. But this, in the 50s, it was a, it was a major thing. Uh, cutting edge tech in its day, so we've got a we've got a piece from Hibbard's disc from the uh, from the uni and some archival photographs that um, I've kind of responded to and, and, and made things in response to. Um, so they're here as well as my response to those and to the research that I'm being introduced to. Great. And how long um, is it here at Birmingham Library for? It's on until the 14th of June. Although if you wait until June to see it, you might share the space with primary school kids and um, secondary school pupils because they're, they're coming in for a range of workshops and, and some community groups. Um, so we've got a lot of outreach activities going on related to it. And after that, is there information about it online, this, this whole thing, or is there... Uh, yeah, well, there's, my, there's my website, um, there's, there's various Facebook events. Um, we're setting up a, a specific um, website just for the project, um, which is not live yet and won't be for a while. Um, my digital skills are um, somewhat uh, rudimentary. Um, bizarrely, my physicist is amazing, on the <laughs> because their computer is their way that they... I mean, the, the weird thing about particle physics is the internet... Uh, and the World Wide Web was invented at CERN um, for the physicists to share knowledge because there's so many of them working in some of these laboratories now, in some of these institutions. Uh, the, World Wide Web, the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee, was a CERN scientist and it was invented to, so they could share this information between them because there were so many of them. They couldn't just have a meeting anymore. There were thousands of them. Um, so it's interesting the spin-offs from, from some of these things as well. And is there any, any plans for anything in the future? Um, there are... Two things, I'm literally applying for a residency at CERN at the moment to actually spend some time at CERN because um, I've, I've not actually been yet um, and then to Barcelona so if that comes ahead that would be fantastic. I'm also putting in another Arts Council bid. The Arts Council are supporting this current exhibition. Thank you Arts Council because that has just made so much difference. Um, and um, I'm about to put another bid in to see if we can get it to move to other locations in the UK. So have you always been into science? Never, no, um, I've always been interested in moving across boundaries with my educational work, um, but not specifically obsessed with science. But um, interested, but but no, not not um, 
um, but not particularly particle physics. Although if you're interested in origins and, and sort of where things come from and you're kind of curious, you end up at particle physics sooner or later because it's, it's, you know, <laughs> it makes up everything. It's the building blocks of, 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 the, of, of the world and everything. That's great. Uh, while we've been interviewing, there's been this wind sound, which is coming from... Is it from the screen over there? <laughs> it's from... Uh, there's, there's, there's four films playing. All, oh, right. All have got their own soundtrack on, which is right. very similar, so it kind of merges. Um, the films were really me saying, well, it's OK. Pa Costas will talk about the choreography of particles. You know, they're, they're, they're constantly changing their nature, they're annihilating, they're, they're, the matter of them is turning into energy and back into matter, so this kind of constant choreography... Um, of, of uh, at the quantum level. Sorry, Costas, I've used that word. Um, but um, so uh, to make static drawings seemed a little bit um, redundant. So I started to make drawings that move, if you like, and I'm too impatient to make animated drawings. So I made some um, drawings using a 3D pen so that the lines are actually three-dimensionally there, tangible stuff. And then I cut them up and I place them on various uh, surfaces like drums and I vibrate them so that they hop around like, like iron filings. Yeah. And the sound is the overlaid footage, each one having a, the sound of a drum on it um, as these particles jump up and down. So it's not wind? No. <laughs> not unless I've... Uh... Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.